I'm going to tell you how to be more productive with Clifton Strengths by avoiding three major mistakes that a lot of people make after taking their Clifton Strengths assessment. And we're starting right now. Hey everybody, my name is Gordon and welcome to another episode. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about Clifton Strengths, leading a strengths based life, or any and all other things leadership related, consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss anything. So the first one's pretty obvious, but I have to say it because every time I'm talking with somebody that I coach or even anybody else that knows that I work with the Clifton Strengths framework, this question seems to come up over and over and over. So I definitely want to get into it and talk a little bit about that. So the other two are things that I think are essential best practices to being extremely productive in your personal and professional life. So please stick around to the end of the video so you don't miss out on those. And real quick, before we get into the episode, let me know in the chat, what is your number one top ranked signature theme? And if you haven't taken the Clifton Strengths assessment yet, there's information in the description below. So please check that out as well. Okay, so at the lead end of the video, I talked about how this first one can seem kind of obvious but I needed to spend talking about it anyway. So let's, let's jump right into that. So inevitably I'm talking to somebody and they share with me that they have done Clifton strengths They're They have their top five and they want to know where to go next. So they ask me, what should I do? What do I, what, what do I do next? So my first question, which may seem obvious is tell me about your report. What does your report say to you? What did it tell you about your themes? What did it tell you about what actions, what steps that you could take to start to live through these strengths? And the question that I ask kind of goes with a response, something like, I haven't really, I haven't really read it yet. So the very first thing you gotta do to create productivity around Clifton Strengths is you have to read, know, and understand your report. You have to read it. You have to understand the key words, the key themes that are through it, the action steps, the suggestions, the recommendations of different things that you can do to amplify those themes, amplify those talents. You've got to spend the time walking through that report and understanding it. And then after you spend that time developing concrete steps, step one, step two, step three, to really start to deeply kind of get into the flow with respect to your strengths. The second one, making your strengths, making that top five, AKA your signature themes, making those clear and evident in your daily work and life. Routines and habits, they're, they're critical. They're critical to your effectiveness. They're criti critical to your productivity. They help you go further, faster. So you have to spend the time to, to do that. So how do you make those routines and habits uh, front and center for you? Visualization visualization of your top five. So you've got critical habits and routines where you can focus on the top five. Now visualize what it looks like to be at your best through the lens of that theme, whether it be learner or it be relator or it be significance, whatever it is that is your top five, visualize what it looks like to be at your best in that moment. And then make clear declarations. These declarations can be verbal, these declarations could be written and posted in evidence. So one example of how to make these clearly evident and present and visible in your life would be to take your top five, print them out, post them in your office for folks to see. They become conversation points. They become the opportunity to create really deep and meaningful connections and dialogue with others around what your strengths are because you may find commonality with them in what their strengths are if they've been introduced to Clifton Strengths. So really take the time to make Clifton Strengths your top five, specifically those signature strengths, those signature themes, make them clear and evident and visible in your daily life. That will increase your productivity. And then the third, <clears throat> getting support and guidance on Clifton Strengths, learning and growing in Clifton Strengths with the support of a mentor or coach. This is critically important. You're, you're making an investment. When you go through and you do the 
ass assessment, you're making an investment in yourself to say that I really think that I want to operate at my highest level. I, I want to operate and be my best self. So since you're making that investment of time, effort, and commitment, what better time to seek out the support and the help of a coach? Because Clifton Strengths is a long-term process, it's a long-term journey. And so you want to be thinking about how do I enlist the support of others who can help me operate in my blind spots. We all have blind spots and what coaches do better than anybody else is to help you see in your blind spots because you can't see them so you need somebody else to help you with that. So when you wanna make that investment in the support of a mentor or a coach, that will help you increase your productivity exponentially. So the support and the nurturing and the help of a coach is critically important to increasing that productivity. So here's the thing, Clifton Strengths is a powerful process to help increase your productivity, your effectiveness, your capacity. But it's also a process that you're gonna to have to go through and you're gonna to have to learn the habits and the routines and the practices that will enable you to maximize those outcomes. So you wanna set yourself up for success by utilizing the best practices that we shared in this video. Because remember, strengths is in fact a long-term journey. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But it's also something that once you invest in, you will see the benefits and you will see the rewards and the opportunities from it. But you have to stay committed to the process. So remember, if you've enjoyed this episode, uh, give it a thumbs up. Again, consider subscribing. And if you want more information about strengths-based resources, Clifton Strengths, or coaching opportunities, check the description below the video. Thank you so much for watching. It's always a pleasure to serve this community. I'll see you in the next one, and be well, everyone.